Marie-Julie Jehenny may be one of the most famous of all Catholic mystics in the modern history of the Church, due in part to her warnings of the Three Days of Darkness and the Great Chastisement. Her visions were so numerous that it will take multiple installments to do her proper justice. By way of introduction, Marie-Julie Jehenny is known as the Stigmatist of Brittany, for she bore the stigmata for many decades and lived a life of quiet suffering as witness of Jesus Christ. Her life was one lived in a great and special mission to spread the love of the cross and the importance of holy suffering, becoming a victim's soul to make reparation to God and to save sinners. Through her, heaven would remind the world of the coming chastisements, foretold by so many other saints and mystics, and forewarned those who would listen on how to prepare both spiritually and temporally, calling to mind once again the numerous past prophecies regarding the appearance of a great monarch, a saintly ruler beloved by heaven who would restore the Roman Catholic faith after years of chastisements, persecution, and desolation in union with an angelic pontiff who would reign over the Roman Catholic Church in the final days before the appearance of the Antichrist. This promised final time of peace and triumph will be the greatest that the Church and the world has ever known. Her visions were so numerous and covered such a wide variety of topics that this will only be part one of the visions of Marie Juliette Jehenny, covering the chastisements of our times. We begin with a curious prophecy of Marie Julie Jehenny, given in 1874, quote, In Rome, the storm will be the blackest. The storm of Rome is even worse than the storm in France. All the wrath of the ungodly is in Rome. All the anger of the wicked is focused on the Holy See. But the chastisements will begin with Paris. This is an old holy card that depicts her vision of this chastisement, and curiously, it depicts Notre Dame and what might be the Basilique de Sacré-Cœur de Montmartre in, on fire. And yes, I know I said that wrong. More curiously, the name of the bishop who investigated her and determined her visions to be of supernatural organ was named Fournier which is the same name as the priest who ran into the burning cathedral of Notre Dame to rescue the Blessed Sacrament and Crown of Thorns. Given the state of things in Paris these days, and France more broadly, keep an eye on the Basilica. It is worth pointing out, though, that the other cathedral church burning in the picture might also be St. Peter's in Rome, not the Basilica. There is some dispute about that in, uh, among the those who Pay attention to the prophecies of Marie Julie Jehenny. In 1879, the nature and cause of the chastisements the Church and the world faced was revealed to her by heaven. Quote, Scandals will pass before your eyes. Just pray and invoke the divine mercy. You should expect to see it all. The heart of the Church is more than a bleeding wound. It does not demand or request the conversion of poor sinners. Today, crime is carried to the altar. The Lord is offended by those who should serve him. End quote. Our Lord would later complain to Marie Julie of a corrupt and fallen clergy causing great spiritual damage. It is the crimes of the clergy that will force down these chastisements. Here the vision or message of September 1881 is critical. Quote, As with our Lord who hears bitter complaints against his people, especially on his apostles that no longer respect him, who have outraged him and who make the holy church suffer. He showed me a deep wound in his divine heart. And he told me, The holy church is wounded by a similarly large number of them that should comfort her and are only making it sad. If you did not want to accept for them your immense sufferings, meaning Marie Julie's offering as a victim soul, I would have weighed down my arm charged with punishments. Your charity has sustained them, but the chastisements when the time comes will be no less great. They force me to strike. They lose their respect for the confessional. They leave the rules that the church orders them to follow, and they are the cause of many of the offenses that they make. Woe to the priests who do not think about the immense responsibility they will have to render to me. They are the cause of evil beyond measure. They are fierce against the good that I, that I operate on the earth to awaken the faith, to excite souls to serve me more faithfully. Soon they will be punished terribly. End quote. At this, her diaries say she attempted to implore our Lord for mercy for the world. 
He responded that he would be merciful, but only for a short time. Then he said with a loud voice, quote, And the pastors of the church, how are they in their faith? The largest number is ready to give up his faith to save his body. The church weeps. The pain they cause will never be repaired. In a short time, the pastors of the church will have spread scandals all over, and they will give the last spear thrust to the holy church. Let this message go forth so that the church knows how I suffer in the person of my priests, and that she has compassion for my pain. They put me in their hearts amidst great and terrible mistakes. Their responsibility will be terrible. This may be a reference to many of the priests saying Mass irreverently and, and receiving the Eucharist themselves unworthily. Often in these days, we overlook the connection between the state of the world and the impact bad clergy have on it, causing scandal that costs many souls their salvation by scandalizing people into never entering the church. Remember that outside the church there is no salvation, and many feel called to join the church, yet the state of the church today is such that the scandals caused by the clergy keep many from joining, and instead they seek the solace of schismatic sects that cannot provide salvation. To survive these chastisements and scandals, the faithful are to call on the divine mercy. September 1881 message from St. Michael the Archangel to Marie Julie Jehenny, quote, Friends of the Sacred Heart, I stay with you. Your company is that of Jesus. You are generous and brave soldiers. The Lord desires me to tell you these words. Get ready, brave servants of God, as the Divine Master will soon come first in his mercy, secondly in his righteous anger and vengeance. He wants me to say this word to his present friends, and I have done my duty. St. Michael then shows her a sword with which he will help the faithful Christians in these evil times. This is the sword that I delegate to the friends of God. This is mine. He shows her his own sword next to the other. They are similar. They both bear the seal of the Lord. It is the name of Jesus written on the blade, well engraved. Dear friends of the Lord, we are here on the threshold of mercy and the threshold of the justice of God. End quote. It was Marie Julie Jehenny's calling upon divine mercy that held our Lord at bay, combined with the same pleading from Our Lady as attested to by various Catholic visions. In 1919, Our Lord would repeat this message to Marie Julie Jehenny. Quote, our Lord would later reveal in 1919 to Marie Julie that if the world turned to the divine mercy, the punishments and calamities would be avoided, but many will fail to take advantage of this period of God's mercy. Instead, Satan will sow discord among the chosen and dearest of the Sacred Heart. Message from February 20th, 1919. Our Lord warns Marie Julie Jehenny. As long as my people will not return to the faith, I will punish in many ways. I test just souls, and I take their tests of pure gold to compensate me and console me, a very sensitive pain that is tearing my divine heart. It is that I see the faith fall, even in many of my dear ministers, the zeal, dedication, falling with the faith. Ah, my divine heart is grieved and saddened. I assure you that on earth, for now, Satan wins. He is full of victories. He triumphs. He dominates. He loses souls. He is sowing disorder and anxiety in my most beloved of the chosen and the closest to my divine heart. Ah, if my people return to mercy, at an instant, I will forgive all. I will forget everything. I will save all souls. I will take away the calamities. I will precipitate Satan with all his minions to the bottom of the abyss. But no. No. Very few return to grace. Indifference is everywhere. Souls are lost without regret and precipitate into the abyss without reflection. And yet my divine heart desires that the triumph is complete. End quote. But what of these chastisements? We begin with a recounting of the vision Marie Julie Jehenny had of the discourse between our Lord and Satan. Was this the same discourse that Pope Leo XIII had witnessed that led him to pen the St. Michael prayer? It appears so. In it, we see the enemy asking our Lord for more power over men, and it is granted to him, in a limited way and not in the amount he asked for, with the reminder that our Lord would always be nearby when the enemy tempts man, so that he can intervene for them if they ask. Then we hear this, quote, A time will come far off, the Lord replied, 
where you will, pos be, you will possess in the world a multitude so great that your portion will exceed mine. You will become a great conqueror for a space of time that will be too long, and which, however, will be very short. While you will make the conquest of multitudes, I will operate bright wonders and earthquakes, when the world is ready to perish, when thou wilt triumph with a victory without measure, when almost all parts of the world, the whole of Europe, will rise against each other. In the darkness there will be many conversions, many of the lost will return to me in repentance. End quote. Satan then asks our Lord for the power to take on the appearance of divinity, and the Lord rejects that request. In this vision, Marie Julie sees the Holy Ghost and is able to discourse with it. She asks if the, the epoch is fixed, when Satan must reign as such a great master. The Holy Ghost says that it is set in the designs of God, and the devil hastens the time, without knowing it exactly. It is this age in which you are now God's children, the Holy Spirit says to her. Satan continues, In the beginning of that time, I will use all profanities and all unjust things to the destruction of your kingdom. I will transform all into a working tool against you. First, I dig this placement where the greatest number live. Do not ignore what he is, the Holy Spirit tells her during this. I dig this place on which you will fall like lightning. You will destroy first, and I, after you, I will finish everything. I will make ruins as has never before existed. That is, the Holy Spirit warns we must not forget Satan is still a powerful angel, though fallen. The Holy Spirit will cause Satan to fall like lightning once more. Satan will destroy first, but then God will send his powerful chastisements. The Lord responds to this by saying that his people will be covered by a tender protection. Satan responds by saying that he will throw in revolt between the church militant and those who belong to the devil, and that he will move all the kings of the world, and that he will sow division that will lead to a civil war in the universe. Our Lord responds with the promise of justice, punishment, miracles, scourges, pests, and the things that we see dominating the headlines today, causing people to stay at home while society shuts down. I will overthrow the temple of your prayers, Satan claims. I will establish the idols we worship. All that is in times of peace that resides in your temples will be broken, dragged out, reduced to dust by mine. Our Lord responds to this claim of Satan's by promising that he will show the world that he is truly king of all creation, and that the lightning of heaven will crush and destroy all that has been given to Satan. That is, Satan, the self-proclaimed lord of the world, will have his earthly kingdom annihilated. And so, and so destroying the edifices of the world, our Lord promises to restore his people. Quote, I will preserve mine from the scourges. I will raise up the ruins. I will cast thee into the abyss, but only after you have used the powers I leave for you now. This incredible discourse that Marie Julie Jehenny witnesses ends with the Holy Spirit telling her that pain is about to enter into the hearts and lives of men, and that hell will sing victories. This incredible discourse happened shortly before the advent of the Second World War. In her life, she was witness to incredible carnage, having lived from 1850 to 1941. She saw the rise of communism, the lodge, the rootless transnationalism that dominates the West today, all part of the plan of Satan and the enthronement of the diabolical over the world today. Her warnings are numerous, and I will revisit them again in the near future. This is but part one of my look at Marie Julie Jehenny. I look forward to reading your comments on this. This video was made possible by the patrons and supporters of this channel, and as my thanks to them, they had access to the video earlier than the general public. Without their support, it would not be possible to continue this work, so a heartfelt thanks goes out to them, especially in these trying times, as we watch what may well be this chastisement continuing to unfold. To that end, please keep praying for the church and for the conversion of souls as we head towards what must come. And if you want to join the ranks of those who support this work, there are options in the description of this video. Thank you for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.